At the height of the Cold War, the CIA hatches a daring plan to steal Soviet space secrets. It's like a classic heist movie, but the guys doing the heist are CIA agents. Can a high-risk covert operation put NASA back on track in the space race? If these guys were caught, the damage to superpower relations would have been severe. October 4th, 1957. The Cold War is about to enter a new and dangerous phase. The Soviet Union kickstarts the space race with the launch of Sputnik, the world's first orbital satellite. The Soviet Union slam dunked us. They beat us to the punch. It was a shock because we had always thought of ourselves as being the leader in the world. The United States response is a satellite called the Vanguard. Millions of viewers watch the launch on live TV. Just a few feet off the pad, the rocket exploded. A humiliating explosion on camera of the American response. Even Kennedy acknowledges Russia's total dominance in space. Kennedy came out and said, we can't catch them. They're just too far ahead. Panic and despair were getting deeper and deeper. This was a, a fatal trend that had to be reversed. The Soviets decide to parade their success in front of the world. In 1959, Russia sends some of its most modern spacecraft on a world tour of international trade shows. For the CIA, it's a golden opportunity. You always want to grab the enemy's hardware, see what they can do. A team of human beings would actually have to get their hands on it and take it apart. The Soviet star of the show is their most advanced spacecraft to date, the Lunik 5, which had recently sent back photographs from the far side of the moon. The Americans caught a lucky break. The Soviets were so eager to show this thing off, they actually used a real one instead of a mock-up. This could be the cookie jar. If they could only get their hands on it. But Soviet security around the probe is tight. The Soviets clearly knew it was something that the CIA would want to see. There was a 24-hour guard around the exhibit halls, and it was constantly watched. It seems like Mission Impossible, but CIA operatives discover that after each exhibition, the probe is packed up and driven by truck to a local rail yard. The rail yards are heavily guarded by Soviet guards who check each crate as it comes into the yard. This journey to the rail yard gives the CIA a window of opportunity. They don't know exactly what is coming in or when, so that gives the CIA agents a loophole to intercept a truck. The CIA launches one of the most daring covert operations of the Cold War. They were going to kidnap the Lunik, take it apart, photograph it, put it back together, and return it before anybody notices it was gone. They were going to find out, by hook and by crook, how a space probe was built. CIA agents managed to turn one of the exhibition truck drivers, who makes sure he is the last to leave the exhibition site with the Lunik on board. The driver has got his instructions, drives it up to where a CIA driver takes over. They hijack the truck and then drive the truck into a salvage yard that they've rented just for this purpose. At dawn, the Lunix handlers will conduct a stock check. Unless the spacecraft can be returned intact before then, the theft will be discovered. This was a matter of life and death. If these guys were caught, the damage to superpower relations would have been severe. With the clock ticking, the team of US experts starts to examine their prize but they get an unwelcome interruption. Click, click, the lights are on. Suddenly, boom, everybody freezes. Have they been caught? Are they about to be shot? The seconds tick by in total silence. It's a false alarm. It was an automatic timer. It just happened. The panic is over. Now the experts need to know what they've got their hands on. 
they have hit the jackpot. This isn't a replica. This is a real production model, the fifth in the series. Working against the clock, the undercover team conducts an in-depth examination of the spacecraft. They spend the entire night methodically taking apart the Lunik, photographing every part of it, analyzing it, figuring out how every piece of it goes together. Dawn is approaching fast, and the team has to rebuild the module so that it looks completely untouched. The key to military intelligence is not only to learn things, but to make sure that the enemy does not know you know them. But the Lunik probe doesn't come with an instruction manual. They had bolts that wouldn't go on. They had to file some of them down. There's one piece that won't fit, one rod that they just cannot seem to get back into place. The load-bearing rod is a key component of the module. If it's not there, the theft will be obvious to the Russians. With only minutes to spare, the CIA team finally manages to screw it in place and complete the assembly. The truck with the Lunik in the crate is returned to the rail yard, and at 7 a.m., the guard arrives. He checks off the crate, and it goes on its way. The Soviets didn't catch on until a year later when it got back to Moscow. And by that time, they couldn't even tell a country it had been kidnapped in. Soviet space secrets are now in the hands of NASA's scientists and engineers. Any secrets would definitely have been helpful to people building new spacecraft for the U.S. It is impossible to be certain how much influence information from the stolen Lunik had on the U.S. space program. But within just a year of the covert operation, Alan Shepard becomes America's first man in space. We may never know the full influence of the Lunik on the U.S. space program. The details of what exactly they learned from the Lunik heist are still classified. Up next, an unidentified object appears in the night sky, and it's heading towards Earth. This thing must be a spacecraft. There's nothing else it could be. An astronomer spots an unidentified object heading towards Earth. This object is coming towards us from deep space. Nobody really knows exactly what it is. Its trajectory suggests it possesses some kind of engine. Looking at the path that this object is on now, it must have powered itself in the past. This thing is unlike anything we've seen before. Somebody built it, but who? 